Welcome to In The City Live, welcome to a very sodden Cardiff City Stadium. The good news is today's match with the MK Dons at the moment is set to go ahead. The pitch has passed an inspection pre-match, we're just going to have to keep an eye on it as we uh, ramp things up prior to kick-off. My guest this afternoon, former Welsh international Ewan Roberts, and we just thought uh, with your the parallels you have with a current Cardiff City player, it might be nice to have a, have a quick chat with you because Anthony Pilkington, a player who's played for Norwich and Huddersfield in the past, as, as you did, so um, I imagine you've seen him play quite a bit over the years. I don't think you ever imagined him making the transition to number nine. I've, I've seen him play a few times, uh, both for Huddersfield, what, Norwich and of course Cardiff. Um, and until the last two or three games, never seen him play centre forward. Um, I think he's done brilliantly. It really, really has. Um, he's used his body well. You know, I love the way he backs into defenders. Got his two goals against Rotherham. Holds the ball up, brings people into play. everything you'd expect from an old-fashioned number nine, really. Yeah. And I'd say he's made the transition incredibly quickly. It's not just you that hasn't seen him play number nine. I spoke to him yeah. after his debut, and he said he'd, he'd never played in that position before. He was completely new. But you're right; he just looks a natural in that position. He looks a natural, and I think it's great that. Obviously, Russell's asked him to play in that position. Can you fill a hole for us? Because over the last couple of weeks, with Joe Mason leaving, Kenwin Jones, the Cardiff have been left short of numbers in that position. And he's obviously asked him to, 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 to do a job. And he's, he's done it superbly. Because um, you know, you're talking about someone who's played as a natural winger all his career. Um, you know, he'd have played centre forward, I'm sure, in training. But it's completely different to playing it against. Uh, and, and a, a, a championship club, but the games I've seen him play last week, Huddersfield, Rotherham, been outstanding. And he's a player that's, that the confidence is back in his game at the moment, which seemed to have waned a little bit at the start of the season. He had a fine pre-season, but now he's back. And as a team, it's a Cardiff team back amongst the goals now. A former team of yours, another former team of yours, Leicester City, are a team, of course, full of confidence at the moment. Just how much could a run of results and a bit of confidence in this Cardiff team push them forward at the end of the season? Well, I think at the minute, Cardiff have got that. People talk about momentum, and it only comes when you're picking results up and you're playing well. I think at the minute... Cardiff have got that. Um, they'll want this game on, you know, having gone up to Huddersfield last week and a really good victory up there, you know, three very, very good goals. It's as if they've got that self belief now that some people have doubted over the season that they're not quite good enough to, to reach that sixth position and, and win a playoff position. Um, they've got that momentum, they've got that spirit, uh, self belief in that dressing room that, you know, they are capable of putting a, a, a run of results together and if they can get a win again today then that will push them further up. And confidence comes in many forms. People have spoken about a bit of quality needed to be injected in this squad. Another Welsh international, Tom Lawrence, is set to make his debut this afternoon. How much of a lift will that be for him personally heading into the Euros in the summer and the team? Well, when, when you see the... You look at the player who left, Joe Mason, and you look at the player that, that Cardiff have brought in on loan, Tom Lawrence, I think Cardiff have got the better of that deal. You know. Joe started the season really well. One reason or another found himself out of the team, spent a lot of time on the bench. I think he scored five in his first 11 and then one in his last 18. I know he didn't start all them games, but he looked as if he didn't really want to be here. Now, Tom's come. I saw him here when Blackburn came down uh, three or four weeks ago. He did OK, but the game that stands out to me, and I'm sure many Cardiff fans, is when he played here for Wales against Holland. You know, played that long striker role. And he was superb. I, I thought he was our best player. His movement, his pace caused problems all night. Gets hold of the ball. The only thing I would say, I'm not too sure if he's a natural goal scorer, but hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll get his fair share from now until the end of the season for Cardiff. And that is the one change to the Cardiff team from last week's victory at Huddersfield. Tom Lawrence coming in for his first Cardiff City start to play in attack with Anthony Pilkington. Just stick around, we will run you through that Cardiff City lineup heading into today's game. And then off the back of that, you'll see Russell Slade's thoughts on his team selection ahead of this afternoon's clash.
Russell, um, very similar predicament to what we found ourselves in at the last home game. We're uh, against a team on the periphery of the relegation zone and coming off the back of a very good away win. Yeah, no, look, um, MK Dons are, are not easy to get to the top side of and um, we know that more than anybody because we've been beaten twice by them in the cup and in the league. So um, we know we're in for a tough afternoon, that's for sure. But look, it's all about us continuing our momentum in, in the league. Um, I think we're seven points from nine. Can we make that ten? That's what we're after today. Yeah, and you said it's that type of the season now. You know, teams head into the championship season looking to stay in touch with the playoffs for as long as possible, and then look to put a run together, don't they? And a bit of consistency is what what you'd be looking for, I imagine, at the moment. Yeah, I, th I think also if we, if we're all honest, um, as much as we want a really lovely performance today, it's, it becomes about the results at this business end of the season and. Um, and you're right also about the consistency, if we can take that challenge and embrace it, um, get control of the game and, and, and therefore get some consistency in our performance, then you know, we're capable of going on and winning. Yeah, and you spoke about balance in the team a couple, a couple of weeks ago, trying to find that, and the, the goals have arrived in the last few games now. And a um, couple of new recruits as well at the, on the deadline day. I'd say the, the confidence is back in the team. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't think we really ever lack that confidence. I think teams go through those situations where perhaps they're not functioning as well as they want to for one reason or another. Um, from our point of view, you know, we're looking forward to this afternoon. Um, we've got one or two new signings in the building. Um, Tom Lawrence makes his debut today. Um, but we've got Kenneth Zahor on the bench, Lex on the bench, and, and a strong bench again. Um, so we're happy the way things are settling down. Um, it, it, it's, it's for us now to, you know, together with the fans, to push on and uh, see if we can get one of those top six slots. Yeah. And a new striking partnership today then. Anthony Pilkington continues in the number nine role. How impressive has he been in recent weeks? Yeah, he's been, he's, he's been very good. Um, had a little bit of a fitness test before last weekend. Um, was able to do about 60 minutes for us. He's, 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 he's a little bit better um, in, in terms of his um, physical status um, for this game. But, um, you know, we'll see how he goes. But, no, if he can hit the form that he did in his last home game, I'll be delighted. And you said he got 60 minutes out of him last week and probably his toughest game playing in the number nine role yet, but still came up with a vital assist for the opener. And a player on the, on the right flank last week who really made a stake to remain in the team today was Sami Amiobi put in a superb 90 minutes yeah he did a, a really consistent um, 90 minutes he was a threat constant threat had a hand in two of the goals in, in that performance at uh, Huddersfield and uh, we'd be looking for the same again and uh, and Pilkey of course um, had a hand in the goal so no he'll be wanting to score again never mind assist today Pilkey will be wanting to get on the score sheet so that's the sort of attitude we want. And finally for me, probably the easiest opposition analysis you've had to do this season. Already played them twice away from home and in both those games you've got yourself into good situations only to go on and lose. So I imagine there's very minor tweaks that were needed. Yeah, I mean, to be fair to MK, they've had a knack of staying in the game. Um, you know, when, when perhaps we were in a position to put closure on the game. So we're, we're mindful of that, we respect that. But this time it's important that once we get in control, we stay in control. Thank you, Russell. All the best. Pleasure. For our third meeting of the 15-16 season, the MK Dons travelled to Cardiff, sat just a point clear of the relegation zone. And after January's meeting with Rotherham, this will match the second consecutive home game that Cardiff will line up against such a proposition. Even so, the Dons have won both our other meetings this campaign, and both by two goals to one. The first back in August, in the extra time of our Capital One Cup second round clash. The other back on Boxing Day, and despite the best efforts of Craig Noon, who netted a second half stunner. Carl Robinson's men have won just one league match since our last encounter, a single goal victory over Reading, yet they did squeeze past neighbours Northampton after a replay in the FA Cup. That cup run though came shuddering to a halt last weekend as Chelsea hit them for five in their fifth round cup clash, and that's the second time already this calendar year that the Dons have conceded five at home. They also shed a fistful against Burnley recently, and neither are those the worst defeats of the season. Their reward for squeezing past Cardiff in the Cup earlier this year was a home tie with Southampton in the next round and one they handsomely lost by six goals to nil. Defensively, they'd been susceptible all season. 
largely putting faith in the same back five that eventually achieved promotion last May. They have struggled at times. They've conceded 41 goals at a rate of 1.46 per game. That's the seventh weakest defensive record in the division. And centre-back Carl McFadzin also boasts the second-worst disciplinary record in the division. Only Sam Hutchinson of Sheffield Wednesday can boast more than the 10 yellow cards he's accumulated. That said, the defensive personnel isn't the only thing which has remained consistent. The positive attacking football favoured by the club under Carl Robinson also remains intact, and the club continue to enjoy an average possession statistic of 53.5, a figure bettered by just Brentford and Derby. But they've struggled greatly to turn that statistical dominance into goals. Their 23 scored this season is the worst in the division, and it's something that the club have attempted to resolve in the January transfer window. Welsh international Johnny Williams has arrived on loan to add a creative spark to proceedings, whilst two former Cardiff connections, Alex Ravel and J. Emmanuel Thomas, have also been recruited to compete with a third former Bluebird in Nicky Maynard, who has shown signs of his old goal scoring self recently. Currently, the club's top scorer is on loan Norwich winger Josh Murphy, and two of his six this season have been scored against ourselves. He netted on debut back in August and then again the winner on Boxing Day. He also has five assists on the season, two short of team leader Samir Carruthers, and with his pace and direct running ability, it's easy to see why the Dons attacked on their left flank 40% of the time, the most in the championship. Right guys, so you hear from Ashley there. We're battling for points to make the playoffs. They're battling to avoid relegation. Two very different battles, but both of them carrying a lot of weight. Both, le both ends, is it going to be a tough win? Yeah, a bit tough one. I think they, they play a lot of football. Um, I think uh, we, we faced it recently, Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Huddersfield. They play a lot of football, but I think these take it to the extreme. Um, keep the ball a lot. Um, we saw it at, at their place. We battered them at their place. To be honest, mm -hmm. a lot of possession, a lot of chances. Um, we should have won the game, but like the, like the Blues game the week before, it, it's it was tough. But at home, especially, we can we can get on the ball more, and I think we need to be looking to win the next two to give, give ourselves a good chance. Well, they've only won once in the league since we played them back in December. Plus, they had that nightmare on, on the weekend there, conceding five to Chelsea, albeit was Chelsea. But still, that's not the first time they've conceded five this season. Is it a bit of a double-edged sword? Like, could their confidence be not? But also, they're going to want to avoid that and they're going to want to make up for, for the losses. Yeah, I think, like you say, the Chelsea game is obviously a bit, a bit different because it's, it's a bit of a cup release for them. I think now that it's back in the league, I think it'll probably be a bit more of a tighter game. Um, like I say, we've played them twice already this year, so we know, we know, we know a lot about them. I think it's, like Scotty said, they play a lot of football there. You know, they're quite fluent and they... They're hard to pick up at times, but obviously on the flip side, they leave themselves a little bit open. So if we can, if we can hopefully exploit that, then I think we'll have a good chance. And what about the importance then on capitalising on the next two games? MK Dons, Charlton, two very winnable games, especially before Brighton and Middlesbrough the next two weeks after that. How important now are, are these points coming up? Yeah, I think they're definitely important. I think obviously, games a game. We know MK Dons is going to be as tough a game as Brighton. You know, in our eyes, I think they're all going to be tough games. So. I think, like you say, though, if we can hopefully get a good, good two results in the next two games, going into them, yeah. the Brighton and the uh, Middlesbrough games, I think obviously it will give us a bit of confidence going into you know them two games. So hopefully we can we can do that. We need about 30, 30 more points, 74. We'll hopefully take your top six. So win half of them, draw a couple. I think we'll be there or thereabouts. Yeah, and we ask it every week. Is it is it still doable making the playoffs? Yeah, more than doable. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've got four points off. Um. Yeah, I think you've only got to look at the lead table, wouldn't you? See that it's, it's doable, you know. Like you say, we've got fixtures coming up that we're, we're, we're going to be trying to win. So if we do, if we do, we, you know, we could find ourselves in the playoffs, you know, in two games' time. That's, that's what the league's about. Um, we just got to take it game, game by game, and get the points on the board.